My name is Michael Markoff. I've been without health insurance for 20 years. These people are dedicated members of the community that don't have insurance. I do not want to have to justify to insurance companies that I want better quality of life and have to tell them or have them tell me it's too expensive. I've gone for an MRI, which I debated on for so long, and have the bill for that, and the bill for this, and that, and a whole bunch of other things sitting on my kitchen table at home. What I find so frustrating about my job is that probably at least 50% of the patients that I take care of never should have ended up in the ICU. I can't afford treatment if it is serious. If I go and find out that this is cancer, I've essentially bankrupted my family. On the other hand, if I don't go get treatment and it's cancer, I've left them without a dad. As a self-employed carpenter struggling to make ends meet for many years, I had to choose between being homeless or having health insurance. I can't, I just can't afford them. You do the math and the money's just not there. Having to choose between their kids' college education, mortgage, heat, um, it's just devastating. I do not want to have to choose between buying medicine and buying groceries for the week. And suddenly we were part of what I guess is called the underinsured. It's hard enough emotionally, physically, living with pain every day without having to worry about how I'm going to get out of debt. I am not a price tag. I am not, my val the value of my life is not a tax burden. They come in for infections that they notice possibly a week or two before, but delay care because they already have overwhelming medical bills. The deductible was $5,000. That meant that we had to spend $13,000 before we would ever get a cent of reimbursement. Before I knew it, I was medically bankrupt. I've seen people with diabetes, even well-managed diabetes, that ignore small ulcers on their feet that are easily treatable but they can't get treatment for because they don't have insurance and they end up losing their foot, sometimes their entire leg. Tens of thousands of people are suffering, dying, and living in fear needlessly every year. That a healthcare system based on corporate greed has given us all too much human suffering. Uh, there is no question uh, that the system that we have now is broken. It's fundamentally broken and it's a mess. It must not be that you're at the doctor's office and you're trying to figure out how to pay. I'm here because this is this is my reality. This is what I deal with and I'm here for everyone else who's dealing with it too. Our problem is that we're spending money for profits, for bureaucracy, for advertising, for billing, we're not spending it where we need it for doctors, nurses, medicine, healthcare professionals. We've got to change our healthcare priorities. Now we need a rational way to finance healthcare. Each of these insurance companies has a different rules, reimbursement, and regulations. And this is just one primary care office. <laughs> now you can imagine why, with all of this, we spend an enormous amount of money on administration. Our current health care financing system, based largely on employer-sponsored private insurance, is unsustainable. We need a system that puts providing this care first. Health care is not a commodity, but a public good. We look at our schools as a public good, our police departments, our fire departments. Why is it that we can't look at health care in the same way? We say we can and we should. The current system of market-based health care financing cannot merely be tweaked piece by piece because it has the wrong goal. The function of a private health insurance company is not to provide health care, it is to make money. And that is the system that we have got to end. What do we mean when we say that health care in particular is a human right? Here we have some five principles that we feel that comprise what having health care as a human right is about. Universality, equity, accountability, transparency, and participation. Everybody must be covered 
Nobody left out. Healthcare resources and services must be distributed according to people's needs, as opposed to payment, privilege, or any other factor. There must be means of holding government accountable for failing to meet human rights standards. Government must be open with regard to information and decision-making processes. That governments engage people and support their participation in decisions about how their human rights are to be ensured. A healthcare system that satisfies these principles is the responsibility of government to ensure. The goal of the Healthcare as a Human Right campaign is to witness, in practice, meaningful healthcare reform that embodies the human rights principles that have been just described. We would like to see the right to healthcare embedded in law. In 2010, we're pushing for action on two bills already mentioned this evening that have been introduced that will help facilitate the implementation of healthcare policies based upon human rights principles, H100 and S88 in the Senate. Face to face, grassroots organizing is the only way we can ever leverage enough power to beat their money. To seek health care is a human right. So we have this campaign that means to take health care as a human right out of the abstract and move it into the concrete world as health care is a human right by Vermont law. That is our goal. To make this a reality in our country, we launched the campaign about a year and a half ago with a series of hearings. Some of you folks may have been at those hearings. We also did surveys and collected stories from Vermonters about how the health care crisis is affecting all of us. On May 1st of last year, we held the biggest weekday rally in the history of the state, where over a thousand Vermonters came out to the State House, um, flooded the State House with supporters. Now is the time to demand that our government do our will without interference from any corporation, and they must create a real health care system. And we're continuing this historic campaign by having a series of people's forums. We held people's forums on health care all over the state. Over 800 people participated, over 70 legislators. Hundreds of people wearing bright red t-shirts proclaiming that health care is a human right crammed into a large meeting room at the State House. What I would say to our legislature is that we are here to do the hard work with you in moving Vermont forward to recognizing health care as a human right. We are looking to our elected representatives to overcome obstacles, not to use obstacles as excuses for inaction. It's time for you guys to please do something. Let's save some lives. The people are dying. We gotta fix it. Please, you guys are the guys to do it. It is time for Vermont to lead the way. I think that if the state of Vermont does the single payer system well as I know we can, you're gonna have New York State, New Hampshire, Connecticut, every other state in this country looking at us, wanting it, and then you're gonna have a national single payer program. And what we heard loud and clear in communities across Vermont is that the time is now for change on health care. It is time for Vermont's elected representatives to recognize, as the people of Vermont do, that health care is a human right. Hear them talking tongues, child Though you know now what they mean Ain't gonna make no kind of difference Just keep your eyes focused on the screen Yes, I guess I see They ain't doing nothing here But leeching off for you and
and me Well, yes, I guess I know There ain't no place left on this earth That I could call my own And yes, I hope I see The day we all wake up And stop them ships upon the sea